Evening, everyone. We want to thank you sincerely for joining us uh, for our midweek broadcast. Uh, do pray for the Lord's blessing to be upon his word as it goes forth. Just to highlight that the presbytery is holding a day of prayer on Zoom again this coming Saturday. Uh, there will be two sessions of prayer, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, uh, 10 a.m. in the morning, uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. We do encourage you to take the time to join uh, one of those sessions. Remember that you do need uh, to register. Uh, those details can be obtained uh, from our good brother, Mr. Andrew Dobbin, or we'll seek to put the, the details for registration up on our own uh, Facebook page or contact me if you would like those uh, sent to you. The speaker in the morning is the Reverend Timothy Nelson, and then in the afternoon, the Reverend uh, Thomas Murray. Just to remind you that uh, the final night of our testimony month will be this coming uh, Sabbath evening at half past six. Uh, Miss Margaret Russell, so well known uh, throughout our congregations, uh, will give her testimony. Miss Russell has given her life uh, to missionary work in Kenya. We're looking forward uh, to her testimony. So do plan uh, to join us uh, for that special broadcast uh, this coming uh, Sabbath evening. Uh, we're going to read together uh, from the Word of God. We encourage you to take the Scriptures. Uh, we're reading in the Old Testament, uh, in the book of uh, Numbers. It's Numbers chapter 21 that you'll find our Scripture reading. Just a short reading from verse 4 uh, down to the end of uh, verse 7. So let's hear the Lord's Word. Numbers 21 verse 4, speaking of the children of Israel and their wanderings in the wilderness. It says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor uh, by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom. And the soul of the people was much discouraged uh, because of the way. And the people spake against God and against Moses. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt uh, to die in the wilderness. For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loatheth this light bread. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents uh, from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Ending the reading uh, just at the close of verse 7. And we do pray that the Lord will add his blessing to this, the public reading of his word. We're going to lift our hearts to the Lord just in prayer. Heavenly Father, we draw nigh to thee in our Savior's name. Thank you for the privilege of being able to bring everything to thee in prayer. Lord, we want to pray that you'll be with us in our study of thy word this evening. We pray for light from heaven. Our prayer would be that you'll break to us the bread of life. We ask thee to open the scriptures, that which I see not. Uh, teach thou me. Lord, come and teach us and instruct us. And we pray, Father, that you'll speak to us. We, we would uh, accept, expect uh, to hear thy voice. And Lord, we would uh, take that from thy hand as a great blessing, just to hear thee uh, speaking to us and ministering to our hearts. Fill us with thy spirit. We, we recognize our emptiness. We need your fullness, Father. We need your power. We pray that the Holy Ghost will come upon us. We ask thee to remember the cause of Christ across the land at this time. We pray, Father, for the work to advance. We pray that even in these unusual days, there will be a building of the church of Jesus Christ. So, Father, hear our prayers. We just ask thee to come and settle all our hearts and minds now and bless us as we sit at thy feet. And we pray that we'll hear uh, thy word. We'll hear thee speaking to us. We offer these our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. The verse that we're taking as our text uh, this evening is Numbers 
chapter 21 and the verse 4. Let me just read that verse to you again. It says, And they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Red Sea to compass the land of Edom, and the soul of the people was much discouraged because of uh, the way. The words there at the end of the verse want to highlight those, direct your attention to them especially, where it says the soul of the people was much discouraged because of uh, the way. We're thinking again of the series of how to cope. We're coming this evening to think of coping with uh, discouragement. I want to highlight to you at the beginning that there is a great warning that is found here in these words and in this passage. And the warning is that you can become discouraged. You can become downhearted, even as a child of God. That is how we find the children of Israel, as it's recorded for us in this portion of God's Word. Notice in our text the depth of their discouragement. The verse says that they were much uh, discouraged. Uh, These people were experiencing great discouragement. And perhaps that's how you are. You're in exactly uh, the same situation uh, today. Nearly a year into this coronavirus uh, crisis, as you think of your life, how you feel, your heart today, you'd have to say that you're much uh, discouraged. Circumstances have been hard. Events have been uh, very trying, uh, to say the least. And you're down. You're down in the dumps. You've lost your confidence. You've lost your enthusiasm. Uh, You've lost uh, your hope. Well, if you are, if that's your condition today, uh, I want you to know that the Bible speaks about uh, discouragement. Uh, And more than that, I I want you to know that the Bible speaks to those who are uh, discouraged. In fact, the best way uh, to deal with discouragement is by listening, is by meditating upon what God has to say uh, in his word. So let us uh, study today what God says about how to deal with uh, discouragement. And there are some questions uh, that we need uh, to consider here about that theme as they're answered for us in this portion of uh, God's word. Notice, first of all, or think of the question, first of all, who was discouraged? Well, the text gives the answer. It says, and the soul of the people. The people who were discouraged here were God's people, those who were redeemed, those who had been greatly blessed. They had been miraculously guided uh, by the Lord. They had been miraculously provided for uh, by the Lord. But despite all of those things, they were still uh, discouraged. And I remind you, brethren and sisters, as we we think of that truth, that being a child of God, being a Christian, doesn't mean that you're exempt. It doesn't mean that you're immune uh, from discouragement. In fact, the opposite is true. There is a greater possibility of you being discouraged. Why is that? Because discouragement is one of the devil's greatest weapons that he uses against the Christian. We could even say that discouragement is his most dangerous weapon. And that's something that every Christian needs to see and understand. If the devil can't stop you with difficulties, if the devil can't stop you with opposition, with lack of workers, lack of supplies, then what he will do is he will get you uh, discouraged, get you into that frame of mind, a, a discouraged soul, a discouraged heart. So this is his greatest weapon. You ask me, why is discouragement so dangerous? Well, there are several reasons uh, for that. Let me mention quickly just a couple of them. For one thing, everyone can get discouraged. Let me say to you, don't fool yourself into thinking otherwise. This is a universal problem among the people of God. We can all get discouraged. No one is excluded. Every Christian can be attacked of the devil uh, in this way. Remember the warning of Paul to the Corinthian believers. He that thinks he stands, let him take heed lest he falls. So everyone, every Christian can get discouraged. Another reason why this is one of the devil's greatest weapons is because 
Discouragement is contagious among the people of God. Here is the greatest danger that discouragement brings. Whenever a few people get discouraged, others quickly follow. Discouragement can spread among a congregation like wildfire. The greatest example that we have of that in the Bible is what took place at Kadesh Barnea just after the children of Israel had set out on their uh, wilderness warnings. Do you remember that the discouraging report that the ten spies brought back from the land of promise, that that discouragement quickly filled the whole camp, filled the hearts of all of uh, God's people, except for two? So why did Israel not go in to possess the land at that time? Why was it that the children of Israel wandered for 40 years in the wilderness? Here's the reason, brethren and sisters, because of the discouraging words of a small number of God's people. So here's something that can spread through a company, through a congregation of God's people uh, rapidly. So what a warning there is. And the warning to all our hearts is, don't be a cause of discouragement in the church. Don't you be a cause of discouragement in your local uh, congregation. So that's just a little on who was discouraged. Think as well of why they were uh, discouraged. That's an important question also. We'll look at the end of the text. It gives us the answer. The people was much discouraged because of uh, the way. It was the way. It was the road that they were on. It was the path that they were treading. That's what discouraged the Lord's people at this time. You might ask the question, uh, what way, what path were they on? Well, you don't have to guess about the answer uh, to that question. Uh, look at the words that are found earlier uh, in our text, earlier in verse, in verse 4. And you're left in no doubt, it was the way of uh, the Red Sea. Notice that the words the way are used again at that part uh, of the verse. Isn't that very interesting? Let me point out that Israel had now been over 39 years in the wilderness. They had been wandering for a long time, what we would sometimes describe as a generation. But still, they were only at the Red Sea. They were at exactly the same place where they had started all of those years uh, before. Now you think of it. After nearly 40 years of wandering, they were not much further on in their journey. The people was much discouraged because of uh, the way. And the reality is that you may find yourself in a similar situation. Many Christians are discouraged today because of the way. After all the years that you have worked, after all the years that you have labored, you don't seem to be much uh, further on. That can be true of life in general, but it's especially true in the work of God. Attendances can be disappointing. Responses to the gospel are minimal. Souls being saved are few and far between. Progress in the work of God is slow and very, very difficult. You're discouraged because of the way. We'll just stop for a moment and think of this. Remember that the Lord knows. He knows everything about you. And the Lord knows the road that you're on. Think of Job. Think of the extremity of the trials that he was passing through. And Job said, but he knoweth the way. Notice the word again. He, know, he knoweth the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, he shall, I shall come forth as gold. So notice the words there. He talks about the way. And also the words, hath tried me. And I want you to see, brethren and sisters, the Lord knows where you are. The reality is, he brought you there. And he has a reason, he has a purpose. He has a loving reason for bringing you the way that he has uh, through life's journey. He has a loving purpose for all that he does. And you need to see that, grasp that today. Never forget where you are, the path that you're on is not an accident. It's not a mistake. You're there because of the guiding hand of God uh, in your life. Do you remember what the Lord asked Philip? 
He asked him about where he could buy bread for the multitude at the time of the feeding of the 5,000. Well, why did the Lord ask Philip that question? Well, the answers, again, recorded for us in the Word of God. We're told in this, he said, to prove him. And sometimes, brethren and sisters, the Lord's purposes in your life, the Lord's purpose for the way that he brings you, the Lord's purpose for the situation you're in is the same. It's to test you. It's to prove you. And it's good to learn that lesson, uh, men and women. Job had to learn it. Remember he said, when he hath tried me. Job, Job knew that what the Lord was doing in his life was a, was a test. It was a trial. Job had to learn that lesson. We need to learn it too. The reality is, there are times the Lord is putting you to the test. And maybe that's just what's happening in your life uh, at the present. There's one other question I want us to consider uh, from this passage. There, there are several others. Time doesn't allow us to consider them uh, today. But I want you to think of the question, what happened when they were discouraged? Remember that discouragement always has consequences. And there are negative consequences. There are negative results. You, you learn of some of them in this passage. I, I want to highlight just uh, two of them to you. For one thing, one of the results of discouragement was they complained. Notice the opening words of the next verse, verse 5. And the people spake against God and against Moses. One of the things that happens when people are disheart disheartened or discouraged is that they need to blame uh, somebody for it. They need to take out their frustration on somebody else. And here the children of Israel criticize two people in particular, the Lord and their leader. It's not a solemn thing. And, and that led, the, the criticizing of the Lord and the leader, that, that led to the chastening of God's people when the Lord sent the fiery serpents uh, among them. Another thing that happened whenever the people of God got discouraged was that they were restrained. Not only did they complain, but they were restrained. Look at verse 10, a little further down the chapter. And the children of Israel set forward. The idea, if you consider those words, is that during this period of discouragement, they had stopped their journey. Their progress had been halted. Their progress had been hindered. And it's important to understand, brethren and sisters, it's important to learn the lesson. There can be no progress. There can be no blessing when God's people are uh, disheartened. So here's what happens whenever discouragement uh, sets in. In effect, this is what not to do whenever you are uh, discouraged. And for a moment, I want you to think about what you should do whenever you are discouraged. And the portion gives us uh, the answer uh, to that question as well. For one thing, there was penitence here. There was confession, repentance among the, the, the people of God. In verse 7, they said, we have sinned. I want you to see their penitence, their confession of their sins. There was also prayer. At the end of verse 7, we're told, Moses prayed for uh, the people. Does not show us his greatness. They had criticized him, but still he prayed for them. And the lesson, brethren and sisters, is clear. Don't criticize each other at a time of discouragement, but rather cry to God for the encouragement of others, the encouragement of the hearts of those that are around you. The other thing that I'll emphasize to you as far as what you should do, what is the answer to discouragement, was the pole. Look at verse 9. Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. The situation was only remedied when they looked to the brazen serpent on the pole. And remember that that's a picture of Christ, of the cross work of our Savior. Uh, John chapter 3, that famous chapter of the Bible, makes that clear as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the Son of Man uh, be lifted up. So the serpent on the pole is a picture of Christ and his cross work. And the reality is this, brethren and sisters, we need to keep our eyes on Christ, on his finished work. Not on each other, not on the path, not on the way, not on the difficulties, not on the lack of progress. We need to get our eyes on uh, the Lord. You think of the words that are recorded of the disciples 
in the upper room on uh, the resurrection day. We're told, Then were the disciples glad when they saw uh, the Lord. And the fact is, there's nothing that makes you glad. There's nothing that will lift and encourage your heart like a sight of Christ. And I want to encourage you to pray for that. Pray for a sight of the Savior uh, from his word as you read it and as you meditate uh, upon it uh, today. So here's how to deal with uh, discouragement. A little of what we're taught about that in this portion uh, of, of God's word. I'll finish just with this thought. Dr. R.A. Torrey, the world's famous evangelist, one of his most famous quotes was this, I refuse to listen to the devil's discouragement. That, brethren and sisters, is one of the best pieces of advice that you will ever get for the Christian life. Refuse at all times, in all situations. Refuse to listen to the devil's discouragements. I know at times that's not easy. Whenever the devil is uttering discouragement, he says it very loudly. He says it very often, very repeatedly. But remember this, the devil's a liar. And he's been a liar from uh, the beginning. So refuse, always refuse to listen to the devil's discouragement. So here's a little of how to cope with uh, discouragement. The text tells us the soul of the people was much discouraged because of uh, the way. I pray the Lord will encourage you. He'll encourage your heart. And especially he'll encourage your heart uh, from his word uh, this very day. Let's just have a word of prayer as, as we close. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for the freshness of it. We thank you, Father, for a book that's relevant to every age, uh, to every society, every generation, to every circumstance. We thank you, Father, for a book that is old and yet ever new. And we want to pray, Father, as we have gathered today the, the bread, the manna of your word, uh, our cry is that it will come with freshness and with blessing uh, to the hearts of your people. Remember all that are downcast at this time. Remember, Father, all that are discouraged, all that are struggling, so many circumstances, unprecedented circumstances that can discourage the Lord's people and discourage us in our service for Christ. And our prayer, Father, is strengthen the hands of your people. We pray that you'll uh, be pleased uh, this day to fulfill that promise that you give power to the faint. We want to pray that you lift up those heads that are fallen down and that are downcast. And we want to pray, Father, that in these days there will be a going forward in the cause of Jesus Christ. Hear these are prayers. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, a Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be our abiding portion, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.